What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Last time we worked on this location right here just so we can bottle water and package it then unpackage it here to be a little different. But I'm not going to lie when you kind of see everything kind of running it's just so satisfying to the eyes. And that's why I can't wait for this location to expand and we start sending out more bottled water. But that will come in due course. And we're sending the bottled water to this location because this is where our mega factory is going to be. So the bottled water comes down the elevators, goes into the water packages, which is unpackaging water, which go into these pipes here. But then also the empty canisters go back up and get sent back to the water plant. The water then gets stored into these buffers right here. And then eventually we'll go into some more machines on this side to start working on aluminium. And yes, you heard me right. We are now starting the process of making aluminium aluminium and getting the things a little bit more optimized around here because right now these canisters are filling up and they need the water to be sent somewhere otherwise these will back up all these lines will back up and it will back up all the way to the actual water plant but for those that don't know if you actually look at the the torch i don't know if anyone knows this but if you look at the torch it's actually the coffee stain symbol i don't know if you knew that it's the logo for the coffee stain the devs. But also, speaking of the dev team, they have got hold of my save, which is this save right now, because a lot of you have pointed out that you can't run my save. And I figured out why, but that won't happen. And I won't be able to tell you until later on, because that's when the save checkpoint is, if that makes sense. And it's something to do with these guys right here. Yes signs and yes i do fix it within this uh, episode and yes i will be re-releasing my save and it, it i can tell you now it is a lot more optimized and a uh, it's near enough fixed but the dev team have got my save to find out what the core problem is so they can fix it and release a patch and hopefully optimize what the problem officially is so you can kind of say we did break the game unintentionally so I apologize, and I know a lot of you wanted to have a look at the save, and again, I apologize. I didn't know anything that was going on about it, but this new save that has been uploaded today will be, well, loadable, because look at this. This right here is a friend of mine who tried to stream the game, and the whole thing crashed. Her graphics card bricked. Uh, don't worry, like the, 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 the GPU was kind of where she just had to reset the PC and everything. But then also this right here is from Dakota Save. Random spikes was appearing. And ever since I posted about that, you guys were sending me your experiences as well. So this new save that you have now should work like a dream. So back on topic, let's start working on what we need to today. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a refinery because that's where we need to. And for future videos as well, they will be a little bit slower pace now because we're in the aluminium and, you know, we can't afford to make jump, big massive jump cuts and you guys getting confused. So the first thing we want to start working on is sloppy, well, uh, alumina solution. We're going to use the alternate recipe right here, which you can get through a hard drive. So we're going to go into this, and this needs 200 bauxite and 200 water, which will output 240 alumina solution. So as we know, we have the water being stored, and last episode, we set it up that 600 water is being sent into the, each of these lines. So that's 1,000, well, 600, 1,200, 2,400 water that needs to be consumed. But also on the top level, we did set up the bauxite train, which is bringing in four lines. And that'll be four lines of 480 for now until we get Mark V belts. And to unlock Mark V belts, we're going to need 100 Alclad aluminium sheets, or aluminum if you're in the US. <laughs> but also we're going to need 200 in case industrial beams, and we're also going to need reinforced iron plates. Specifically, 300. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start expanding this foundation out here, because obviously we're going to need some new refineries. And I'm just going to randomly expand it in any direction. It doesn't matter if it's flat or what. And this is where most people kind of get kind of like um, creative block because they feel like the, the, you need to plan uh, your direction of your factory to kind of make it look nice. Just kind of wing it, go with it and adapt. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to ex uh, expand the foundation along this way because I am going to add in the elevator, well, the lifts are the uh, elevators uh, of the box site, which is going to come down into this location. So we need to do four lines there as well. So let's just kind of get uh, our logistics and do a conveyor hole. And let's just put four of them next to each other, just like this. And then, of course, just bring your belts down. So we have four coming down like so. And then I'm just going to bring out my 
uh, bauxite. And I think I'm just going to follow the flow of how this is turning. So we're just going to turn this around here like this and bring it along. But instead, this is going to come straight ahead this way. And like I said, you have to adapt. And I think having these all stuck together and then I can just change you know, the, the look of this, or even if this is going to stay here in the future, which is was going to be my um, a bit of a walkway. But we can do something, because I can add a walkway over this or something like that. But we'll see. Like I said, just build and then adapt to whatever you build. Okay, so I've started bringing in the belts, but also I've added the refineries. So as you can see, I have one all the way up to 10 refineries here. And you must be wondering why. So if we open the calculator right here, and we know that we're bringing in four lines of 480. So if we do 480 times by four, that's 1,920. And then the recipe for the sloppy aluminum requires 200. And then if we do 1,920 divided by 200, that should be 9.6, which it is. So uh, the only reason I'm doing them calculate is just for, for those people that can't do the mathematics in their head and need it as a visual representation. Not just because I'm being a spoon, but sometimes I am a spoon, all right? So we've got 9.6 machines, and this end one, as you can guess it, is going to be underclocked to 60%, which is going to equal the 0.6 of the 9.6. So this is underclocked to 60%. All these are going to be set to 100%. And they do require also... Uh, 200 water. And as you know, each of these lines are carrying 600. So we have four lines coming in, which this one is going into three machines. The next one is going into the next three machines. The third one is going into the, the you know, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. And then the, the fourth machine is just going to get a direct feed from the water line itself. And that's the kind of direction I'm going at the minute. But when it comes to bauxite, that's a little bit of a different story. And the reason that is, is because these are Mark IV lines. And this is 480 bauxite coming down here, and the same for these three as well. So, each of these refineries, like I said before, need 200 bauxite. So if we put down a splitter right here, we're going to place that right there, and we're going to connect this belt up to there. And then we're going to put a belt into the refinery, and that's going to consume 200, meaning there is now 280 going to be coming out of this line. So let's get another line, but this time we need a smart splitter. So we're going to grab ourselves a smart splitter, and we're going to put this right here, line that up to there, grab ourselves the belt, connect that up to there, and do the same here. So that's going to go into that machine, and that's going to now consume 200, which means there's going to be 80 left over on this line. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this smart splitter. We're going to right-click on this. Well, not right-click. We're going to go on the right side. I'm going to make sure this is set to bauxite. And then this one is going to set to overflow. And then right here, we're going to put a conveyor hole, literally right there, Grab ourselves a Mark II lift because it's only bringing 80 per minute out. Connect that up. And we're going to connect these two here to this, which is then going to go 80 underground. So we need to do the same for this one as well. So I'm going to connect these two up, put a splitter here, smart splitter underground. And then the same for them two and then them two. So what that's going to do is that's going to equal 80, 160, 240, 320. Okay. And then what we're going to do is underneath the ground, we're going to do a smart splitter that's going to prioritize bauxite to go this way, which will be 200, because obviously the machine needs 200. And then the overflow should send out exactly 120, which is what this machine is going to need, because what's in the bracket is what's equal to the clock speed right here. Hopefully that makes sense and you followed along with that. If you need to, just go back in the video and just watch it over again and hopefully you understand it. It's just a bit of load balancing with a bit of manifolding. And if you've not seen my video on manifold lines, I highly recommend checking it out. I will put it in the description below. So bada bing, bada bosh, I have done what I just described. So as a visual representation, as you can see how it's going to look, we have, two, well, two splitters there, that one being a smart splitter, 200 going into there, 200 going into there, the remaining, which is 80, being sent underground. Same with there, 200 that way, 200 that way, 80 going underground and we've done that for eight machines so then if we go underneath we can see that the ninth machine here which requires 200 is coming into this one so them four lines of 80 and if you do look four lines of 80 equals 320 
They're all merged together. So 320 is coming along there. 200 is going to get sent this way because this right here is a smart splitter with a right output. So if I stand this way, because that's obviously the input there. So on the right side is set to priority, which will be box site. This line will fill up, which means the overflow will be 120. And as you know, that is the end machine's requirement for its input right there. What's in brackets is what is needed because I've underclocked it to 60. And for those that don't know, that is a thing now since update seven. So every, every, every time I can change this in the brackets is what will be the outcome when I turn it on and connect the power. I think it was update seven. I can't remember. I can't remember. I played too much of this bloody game. Way too much of this game. So the next thing I want to look at is where this Illumina solution is going to get sent to. So if we pull out another refinery right here, we can see and scroll down. I have an alternate recipe called Electrode Aluminum Scrap or Aluminium Scrap. Jesus, can I just please say it one way? Just, just one way, Bitsy. Just one way. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this alternate recipe in here. And as you can see, it requires 180 alumina solution and 60 petroleum cork, which is going to output 300 aluminium scrap per minute and also a byproduct of 105 water per minute. But also, if we look into the sloppy alumina, we know this is sending 240 out, which is more than is required right here. So what I could do is I could kind of load balance this up a little bit more and kind of split this 240 into 180 so i can send 60 this way 60 that way 60 this way 60 that way and so on and so forth and merge them together to get an additional machine yes i could do that or i could make it super simple just so we can get mark 5 belts so we can start building in the masses so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to put down a one-to-one -one ratio so I'm just going to put down a machine, which is just going to go straight here like this. And I'm going to directly, well, if I line it up correctly, bits, your spoon, uh, directly line this up here. I don't know if that's lined up. It's not. I can't line this up for the life of me right now. Please hold. Please hold like that. There we go. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get one pipe from there to there to directly feed it. But what? Hello, Belt. Do you mind not kidnapping me, please? Jesus, thank you. Um, then what I need to do is I need to feed this charcoal. And how we make, well, petroleum cork is we just need heavy oil residue. And we definitely know how to make heavy oil residue. Because we can ask the power plant about that. Because I'm, I'm making heavy oil residue here. And all it requires is literally 30 crude oil which will output the 40 heavy oil residue, but it'll also send out a byproduct of polymer resin. And for those that don't know, the blue crater has a decent amount of oil in it. So as you know, I put a radio tower for you guys down, because obviously I know what's in the area, but you guys may not. So as a visual representation, I you can now see the items that's in this area. So we can see we have quite a bit of crude oil. We've got some impure over here, we've got some normal, and we have three pures. So to be exact, we have a pure right here, a normal, a normal, and an impure, and then a pure, and then a pure. So that's a 600 line right there, 600 line, that's 1,200. Then we have a, a normal, and a normal, which will merge together to make a 600 line. That'll be 1,800. And then another pure, which will be 2,400. And then we have an impure, which will make 150 uh, if required or needed. So we're going to make four lines of 600 crude oil. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to extend this foundation out this way and push it back and then bring it this way. And then we're going to be building quite a bit of, well, heavy oil residue just in case we need it in the future, but also to make some petroleum cork. But now you must be wondering, what are we going to be doing with the resin? Well, resin is always good for plastic. So I'm going to make plastic from the resin, but also I'm going to be using the excess water, which is being sent from this line. Because as you know, like I said earlier, this end water line is only going into one machine, which is right here at the end. So this is taking up uh, 200, uh, well, 120 water, meaning there is 480 excess water on this line, which will go in to make plastic. And for plastic, we just grab ourselves a uh, refinery, go down, residual plastic, right there. So 60 polymer resin, the 20 water, which will make 20 plastic. 
And if I'm not mistaken, the heavy oil residue is sending out, uh, well, 20 resin. So every three refineries will go into one refinery. So a three to one ratio. So heavy oil residue will be three refineries and one will be 60 uh, to go into make plastic. So what I need to do now is if we've got how many pipes did I say? Four times 600, so 2,400 crude oil. So if we do 2,400 crude oil, divide by 30 that's going to be 80 refineries we're going to need and then if you do four lines of 600 divided by 80 that should be 20 refineries in each crude oil line so one line of 600 will go into 20 refineries so we're going to do a line of that way a line next to that a line next to that and then a line next to that and then output all the resin merge all the resin together to go and make me some plastic and there we go. I have now added the 80 refineries all connected up to one crude oil going to 20 refineries each and then the resin all being sent down each line, which I've not merged yet, by the way. And they're all being fed by these crude oil lines down here, which are just not anything special. They're just on concrete blocks, which is being sent up this spine right here to the underflooring. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, yes, you guessed it, we need to pull out another refinery because when you get to start getting like tier seven plus onwards, you're going to be using a lot of refineries. And if we look at the uh, petroleum cork, we need 40 heavy oil residue per each machine, which is gonna output 120 petroleum cork. And as you know, we have 600 um, uh, heavy oil residue in each pipe, which means if we check in here, 600 divided by 40 should be 15. So we have 15 machines we need to put down. And I think I'm just going to place them directly in a line that goes down this way. So then I'm just going to get one line, feed it along here, and it's going to feed all this, which does mean, technically, I'm going to be producing how much petroleum cork? 120 divided by 15, 100, 120 times by 15, sorry, is 1,800 petroleum cork. And I don't know what I'm going to be needing all that for, to be honest. I'm just going to put it there so it's there and we've got it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send that petroleum cork down here on one belt of 480, which I think it needs 480. We're going to need... Oh, sorry, that's the wrong machine, isn't it? So if we're doing one-to-one, -one, it's going to be blah, 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 petroleum cork, not petroleum cork. It's going to be electrode scrap. We're going to need 60 per each one. So if we do 480 divided by 60, it's going to be eight machines. So... We've got a 480 line of petroleum cork coming down. It's going to feed eight of these machines, and then the rest will come down another line, and then I'll sink the petroleum cork in an awesome sink to make sure there's no form of backup. But what I really should be doing, and, it, and somebody will probably mention it in the comments, is like, bitch, you're sending out 240 uh, alumina solution. Why not just, you know, make more machines, which technically I could, and it makes the right sense. It makes the most sense, sorry. To, because obviously I'm sending out, well, that's going to be a little bit different. This one's sending out 240. That's going to require 180. So why not send the XX, XS60 and then, you know, combine what? Uh, three of them. So 60, which is going to be nine anyway. You could additionally get three more machines producing an additional around 900 electrode uh, uh, aluminum scrap, which we could add more machines. Because the aluminum scrap is going to be going into a. Uh, smelter to make pure ingots because this requires 60 60 uh, scrap right and to make that how much how much scrap are we going to be making right now so if that's nine so that's going to be nine times that's the wrong machine nine times 300 obviously nine times three oh, la, 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 300 is 2700 um so we, we're going to be placing down around 64 smelters to do what we need to over there, you know? Well, back to the topic at hand. Let's start placing these down. And all I'm going to do is going to put a line of refineries and I'm going to connect one of these pipes all the way along and just manifold it simple enough to all the inputs of the 15. Or I might even overclock the machines just to, re you know, save a little bit of space. But it's the mega factory. What do you expect in a mega factory? Machines and a lot of them. Okay, so as you can tell, I have now added the refineries that are making the petroleum cork. I've not obviously not powered or connected them all up yet, uh, but once that's done, everything should be running smoothly. But you must be wondering what that is. Yes, that 
right there. So here's a fun little story time for you. As you know, we've been having a lot of discrepancies. We've had a lot of issues with the save regarding FPS. Like it's been very, very crazy. I've had you guys reporting that your saves are, that you couldn't even load the saves. I showed you the clip earlier on in the video. And yes, all this is, is I went to the satisfactory calculator, uh, satisfactory calculator website. I put my save into there. And as you can tell, if you look at the highway now, I have now removed all the signs from my save. That is right. All of my signs from my entire world have been removed. So we have no signs on the highways. Even the signs from this building have gone. And this looks so nice, especially with all the purple streaks going down there. If you've seen that, obviously, you, you know what I mean. But if you haven't, it's it's I think it's in one of the thumbnails. You'll see it. But yeah, it looks totally different now with all the signs gone. But here's the kicker. I was getting around 40 frames per second. That's with a Ryzen 9 7950X 4090 GPU overclocked. Uh, 64 gigabytes of DDR5, and oh boy, was I was getting around 42 FPS. I've removed all the signs from my save, and I'm getting 170 FPS now. 170. Yes, you heard me correctly. So now what I've done is I have re-uploaded my save in the Discord, um, which you can find in the link in the description. Make sure you obviously you select my section and then you'll see the bit save. Now you can download it. Let me know what you think of it and, you know, go in there and stress test your computer now because now it should be perfectly fine for you to load. Uh, obviously, it still might be a bit demanding depending on your system specs. So please acknowledge that. But there is no signs in the game which should cause you any more FPS stutter. So please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully it's been addressed. Okay, so now I've got things powered. Things are moving. We have the petroleum coat coming out, which petroleum coat looks so weird on a belt. As you can tell, it looks like a pile of dung. I'm not going to lie. It looks like a like cow, like cow poop, um, if, that, if, if that's the way you want to put it. Uh, but this is all now going into the mergers on the back here. And I've got the machines, obviously, sending out the Illumina solution directly fed into these machines, which are producing the electrode scrap. Well, the aluminum scrap or aluminium scrap. Bitch, you're saying it two different ways again. God damn it. Okay, okay. so we've got aluminium scrap going in here. Um, and then, uh, well, coming out of there, sorry. And then that is going to go into 64 smelters. But all of that will get done in the next video because, like I said, I want to make this down in smaller chunks. I don't want to throw too much at you uh, when we're in this stage of the game because I don't want feel people to feel a bit overwhelmed because I'm still trying to cater to new satisfactory players as well. So, with this being done now, what I, want, I do want to do, before we can obviously continually make uh, aluminium scrap, we need to send the water elsewhere. So, what I need to do is with the uh we need to make uh we need to ask the foundries don't we is it foundries i can't remember if it's foundries where's aluminium sheets uh assemblers right the assemblers yeah aluminium sheets we're gonna need copper ingots so to get copper ingots what we're gonna actually do is we're going to use the alternate recipe for copper which is alternate pure copper recipe which is gonna require 10 water so we need to bring in a load of copper in the next video. We're going to bring it along the train line. We're going to distribute it down somewhere, make a literally a brick ton of copper by consuming the correct amount of water, which this is being sending out to then go into these to feed the copper ingots, which will then feed the assemblers to make the outclad aluminium sheets. And also it will make the casings as well because we're going to need copper ingots here. Uh, aluminium ingots here and we're going to require 64 or around there uh, which is going to consume all the electrode scrap so we're going to do that in the next video so like i said it was a little bit of a different type of video because i need to make it into smaller chunks so it's understandable to you guys but also please let me know if my save file now works on your system and hopefully if you was getting issues before you should not now i hopefully and i, I, I can kind of promise you it should not so as always Make sure you to check out my Twitch live streams if you want to see me build this stuff live and kind of structure these videos. And then also keep smiling and check out my other content right here. And I'll see you in another video.